All right, everybody, welcome to That Gets My Goat. <laughs> yes. This is Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anglovich. Are we supposed to do funny voices today? Have we started again? Um, no, I'll quit. Sorry. I just right. uh, figured I'd carry it too far first. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we got some catch up to do, right? Probably. What was the last show we, we spoke we on? We talked about Harry Potter. Okay. And then what came out after Harry Potter? The Smurfs. It did. Excellent movie. Weren't you blown away by how good that was? Oh. I, I actually cried. The The scene where Papa Smurf gives his life so that Brainy can survive really surprised and moved me. And the, the scene where all the Smurfs take turns having sex with Smurfette <laughs> to show the evil clown Pennywise that that's what humans are all about. I, it confused me, but, you know, it's, obviously they knew what they were doing. I, Yes, yes, yes. That was very nice. I really liked that gangbang scene. No, Smurfs didn't come out until later, though, actually, so we're not going to talk about it. Oh, okay. Uh, what did come out right after Harry Potter? Was it I think we Captain had like, America Next? Oh, yeah. Well, there was a week with like horrible bosses and stuff like that, but Captain America was the next movie we saw together. That's true. It's, it's not been that long. Oh, okay. I was at Comic-Con. And you were in... Um... I was home by that point, but we decided since you were at Comic-Con that I would wait. And we saw it on Monday instead of on uh, midnight, right. opening right. night or whatever. That wasn't really difficult for me because there was so much stuff to do in San Diego. There were people that were going to see it. Um, but then I bet you were... San Diego's theaters probably freaking raked it in for that movie, you think? I would think so. They had held the world premiere of Cowboys and Aliens there. You know, they brought everybody down, trotted Harrison Ford out in handcuffs again. Again? Down there in San Diego. Did they put him in like a, a stockade kind of wagon? No, it was one of those it? Hannibal Lecter full oh. body things. But you had to have really, really wanted to go to that, and, and I, I didn't know how to do it, and so I didn't. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I could have gone to see Captain America with a bunch of strangers or waited and seen it with you, and I made my choice. Unfortunately, I drove back that same day. <laughs> I, I crashed at my uncle's place because like last year during the drive, I, I got so tired that I just had to pull over at like a rest stop and go to sleep. And I didn't want that to happen. So I crashed at my uncle's house and he got me up at, geez, it was like quarter to six in the morning or, or earlier than that, like quarter after five. And, and so I drove straight through, and then <laughs> you and I were going to go to like a 7 o'clock show. Mm -hmm. And luckily there was a 9.30 or something like that. Yeah, we were going to go to the 9.30. And it turns out that was in 3D. <laughs> we walk in, and I was about to buy the tickets, and I noticed that the times are in pink on one thing and in white and another. And I went, what does the pink mean? She goes, oh, that's a 3D showing. <laughs> She says, pink means would you like to go upstairs? <laughs> yeah, once I heard that, I was like, oh, crap. So, yeah, we had to go to a different theater and see a different showing uh, a little bit later. And it's weird. The theater is not that far from your house, really. And I had never been there. In all oh, really? the years I've lived here, I'd never been to that theater. It's nice, though. It was one of those where you could pre-select where you wanted to sit. And mm -hmm. so you and I chose these two seats right in the center of the auditorium. And we went in. And there were four other people in the whole theater, and they were on either side of those two seats. Yep. That was pretty funny, I thought. Just like, well, let's hold hands, folks, because we're going to be here a while. Monday doesn't count in the opening weekend totals, right? No, not unless it's like a Memorial Day, a holiday kind of thing. and so. Okay, so it's been a week, and I know that you keep tabs on this kind of stuff. How has it done in its second week? Um, it dropped substantially. It dropped more well, than it, Thor did. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it didn't drop like Harry Potter did, and it didn't drop like Transformers did. It uh, Usually, the, the bigger they open, the harder they drop. Right. Because a movie like Harry Potter, uh, people make an event out of it. It's like, everybody, Most let's definitely. get dressed up and go see it opening night. And, you know, by the next week... The only people going are the people that wanted to avoid the crowds or the people that are like, hey, let's see it a third time. <laughs> and with Captain America, you also had the competition of Cowboys and Aliens, which was pretty much going for the same demographic. Right. But yeah, it held up fairly well. It's comparable to... I, okay, I don't know what it's comparable to. Um, nothing. There's as nothing. Far, as far as openings like it. go, uh, it opened really, really strong on Friday, and it looked like it was going to be the, the biggest opening of the four, but it dropped off 
enough that uh, Thor ended up being the biggest uh, superhero opening opening of this summer. It was the first one, wasn't it? And it was the first one. And I wonder how much of that is that there was no competition and that, that people have been waiting months to see a superhero movie unless right. Priest counts. And and I don't know. A lot of people were saying that there's going to be people sick to death of comic book movies by the time Captain America came around because we had a lot. Yeah, it's short the fourth succession. major sure comic book ever. movie. And I'm sure we've never had four in a summer, ever. Never right? had four, and we've never had Thor. Okay. Uh, I was told there would be no crappy puns. <laughs> we need that sound effect from Gravelcast where the crowd goes, ah, Okay, I've got a good one. That's, <laughs> but it's not held on quite as well as Thor did. Mm-hmm. But it, it'll do better than Green Lantern, and probably do better than X Men. X Men. But of the four, it's been really well reviewed. Uh-huh. It probably got better reviews than than all of them. Although X Men got good reviews. X Men did. Reviews. Yeah, I was actually checking that the other day. Oh, okay. When the U. Um, I looked on the Tometometer. So far, at least. X-Men was the one that had the highest ratings. Okay. And Captain America, I think, was a 77, and Thor was a 78, and X-Men was something like 82. Oh, okay. So they're all... And Green Lantern was at like 25 or something sad. But it was better than Smurfs. Smurfs was at like 18 or 16 oh, really? or something. So See, I didn't know that. I, critics I, do uh, know what they're talking about. I assumed that Smurfs was... That everybody loved Smurfs as much as I did. <laughs> uh, okay, so... You and I saw it, and is there anything you want to talk about, about the movie? Um, I enjoyed the film. Uh, I think I mentioned a little bit of what I liked about it on the forums. If you haven't checked them out, you should. Yeah, but that's months ago now. That's true, that's true. So Um, if you can remember what you thought. I've always been a pretty big fan of movies that are kind of nostalgic about the World War II era, that kind of time period, the 40s. I'm a big fan of, of big band jazz kind of music. You know, I, I was a total metalhead in high school. You know, I listened to like Metallica and Anthrax and all that kind of stuff. Guar. But I went out and bought after watching uh, Tucker. I what was it was that the Tucker, a man in his a dream. man in his dream. I went out and bought a Glenn Miller tape right in the middle of the time that all I listened to was that kind of stuff. So. It's something that goes way back. I, I love that kind of time period and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just loved the feeling and the images and stuff that they evoked with that. Uh, and and I really liked, you know, we, we've talked before the whole greatest generation thing and all that kind of stuff and how just people seemed to saw, maybe they saw the big picture better and they were able to put the good of the many above the good of themselves back then, whereas people just can't do that anymore. I don't know what the real difference is, but gosh, the character that they had for Steve Rogers when he was just so desperate to get out there and serve his country, even though he was just this twerp that was the smallest guy on the freaking planet. It was really interesting. I really liked the uh, earlier parts of the film. Uh, I think his origin as Captain America, maybe the origin story of all the origins that we've had in film that I like the most. I don't know. It's possible that if I, you know, was forced to really choose and sat down and watched them all, I might change my mind. But gosh, I I really liked it. The story was interesting. Red Skull was really well done, I thought. I'm glad that they didn't I don't was it a man I mean it looked like to me like mostly it was makeup on his face. I think it was a prosthetic, and they probably had green around the nose. Uh-huh. Because, yeah, he, he looked way too real to be... It was way better than friggin' Green Lantern's mask or any of that kind of crap that we've seen this summer. Some of the awful CG that we've had to uh, bear. Red Skull was really well done, and I loved Red Skull. I loved... Uh, Arman Zola, what is it? Avram Zola, what is Zola? Arnim Zola. Arnim Zola. I loved Emil Zola a lot. He was a great character. And gosh, where do they find a dude that looks that way? I suppose he's been in several other films. Yeah, that's Toby Jones. He's the voice of Dobby on the Harry Potter. Right. But yeah, he is such an interesting looking dude. He's like really, really short and... I don't know. He looks like a cartoon character almost. He, he does if, if uh, Porky Pig were a person. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's great. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I was impressed by that film. I really liked it. I liked uh, pretty much uh, all the things about it. It was, I'll have to admit, the ending was a little bit unsatisfying because, you, you know, he sacrifices himself, I guess, or whatever, but they went ahead and went forward. I thought it might have been better if they didn't go that far and have him wake up in the future. Spoiler alert, wake up in the future. <laughs> No, I agree completely. I think it might have been better if they just went back to they find him in the ice, but not have him wake up and let that bit be saved for the Avenger movie or whatever. I don't know. It's hard to say. But it was interesting because you said this that, that night well, as we were sitting there, you know, he, they talk as he's going down in the plane, you know, that they're going to go out and have their date and he needs to learn to dance, etc., and uh, then when he wakes up in the future, and they keep they keep going with the film, you expect something, you know, he's he's going to see her, and they're going to finally do this, the date, and he's going to dance, even though she's super super old and in a walker or whatever, or he he wheels her around in her wheelchair or whatever it is, but he gets his chance. Yeah, I needed that emotional button with them, and and that that's the tragedy of time travel that you don't see very often kind of thing. And uh, it just, yeah, the fact that he's the last line is I had a date led me to believe, okay, after the credits, we'll see this date <laughs> right. or whatever. And, and I don't know, maybe it's not a priority for them. Maybe it was just me that that really resonated with. And I really wanted to see that, you know, um, mm -hmm. if you recall it, and this is a stupid tangent, but do you remember that house of M event crossover that right, they had in right. the comics years ago. That is a stupid tangent. And it oh, is. Go on. But in the House of M universe, the, the Scarlet Witch is a character whose powers are able to alter reality. And she changed reality so that all of the Avengers, you know, all of her friends, got their fondest wish. And so Peter Parker, everybody knew who, that he was Spider-Man and everybody loved him and and uh, Uncle Ben was still alive. And Gwen Stacy was and too. Gwen Stacy was too, and all that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And Captain America, do you remember what his wish was? Yeah. Later on in the book, I think it's Wolverine who maybe his healing factor. I can't remember what it was, but he remembers the way it's supposed to be, and he goes around and he starts. Uh, they go around with somebody has a, a power that helps them to understand and see what it's supposed to be like. Right, there's a little mutant girl that can uh, clear it. people's perceptions. Yeah, and so they go around to everybody, and then they get to Captain America. They go to wake him up, and he's like 80 years old. And they're like, uh, we're going to have to take a pass on this one. Yeah, his dream <laughs> was his to dream have never, was been, to never frozen been frozen and who have been able to live his life and grow old. And I loved that. It was just like, wow, that's really, really cool. The man out of time thing is enough for a whole freaking movie. Seriously, that's 90 minutes right there of just him walking into a Walmart and him going into a restaurant <laughs> and him turning on the TV and Barack Obama is on there and, and him. And him going to take a pee and then when he backs away, it flushes by itself and he just freaks out. I'm serious. That I would. <laughs> there is no end to how much joy I get out of that kind of stuff. He goes to that McDonald's that's right over there by my house and he goes to throw something away and the thing goes and opens up and says, thank you. Like it does and he just freaks out. Yeah, I, I don't know. It seems like you could make a TV series, and every week there's two things that freak out Steve Rogers. But uh, instead, let's jam it into, gosh, what would you say, 45 seconds, yeah, a minute? Yeah, it was minute? a really short or whatever, bit which at is, the end. Which is fine. They can still do a movie like that if they wanted to, though. I think the reason they jammed it all in is because they got Avengers coming next year, and they need to have him ready to go for that, I guess. And yeah, that's the big picture, and that's the thing that it, it, you know is very much like being a writer for a comic book and uh, for like a Marvel comic book back when they cared about continuity. And you're like, you can't do this, and you can't do this. And there's an upcoming issue of Fantastic Four where this is going to happen, so you can't contradict that, you know, kind of thing. So it's almost like their hands were tied, and they had to get to a certain point, and right. there were certain things that they maybe couldn't cover or that they had to lay the groundwork for for the Avengers movie. But at the same time, you want to set up possible storylines for a Captain America sequel. Right. 
And I just, I, I hate having to wait. Let's say that it's only three years or only two years before we get a Captain America 2. I just hate having to wait to see if they do that damn dance. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, in the comics, in reality, uh, World War II was less than 20 years before. You know, when Stan took Marvel Comics and said, let's bring Captain America back. That was right, less than was 20 years after woke him up. World War II had ended. And so Peggy Carter was not even middle-aged. And she, yet she had a younger sister, I think, is how they did it, named Sharon, that could be Cap's new love interest. But Peggy had moved on and married somebody else and all that stuff. Right. Had family of her own. And I could be wrong. That maybe it was always her niece who was Sharon. But I think over the years, instead of being her sister, Sharon became her niece. And now it's like her great niece or whatever. You know what I mean? Granddaughter, great, great, great granddaughter. And I imagine if it were me making Captain America 2, I would have him go and he finds where Peggy is. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, dude, do not put old age makeup on Haley Atwell. You got to find an old woman who, you know, freaks with a British accent. And she introduces Cap to... Her granddaughter, or, geez, Louise, it would have to be great-granddaughter now, right? Holy cow. Probably, yeah. And and that's Sharon. That's the new love interest for movie two. But but the wistfulness and the—I the, I love that they kept postponing those two getting together mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you've seen the movies where it's real easy. Like you know, the 1989 Batman, Kim Bassinger and Michael Keaton meet 30 seconds later, intercourse. Hey. And, and nothing, there's nothing wrong with that for a certain kind of movie, but it was just like, whoa. And then there's some, you know, where they just delay it, delay it, delay it until the very end. And this one, well, there, there was a kiss and that was it. Yeah. You know. They delayed it to the end and then, oh, shoot, that's what the end is? Well. And I like that. I like the regret, yeah. the, the, the what might have happened and the, oh, gosh, you know, the, the cruel twist of fate. I don't know. I, 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 I don't even know where to start on Captain America. Because okay. We've been going for a while. I think it's time we probably put a stop to it for today. You're right. I didn't intend for us to go this long. I, I, I think I didn't have much to say. But okay, yeah, we'll, we'll pick up and see if I do have something to say next week. We always do. All right. We'll see you later, folks. I'm Big Yankovic. I'm Risha Field. Bye. That gets my goat, or whatever this is ultimately called, is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Very sad. <laughs>